Dan, when I got pulled over for no insurance, I got something that looks like a ticket, but there's no fine or penalty on it. It gives me a date to appear in court. So just tell me what's going on here. It's, it's a good question, John, because even though the police gave you what looks like a ticket, you know, this yellow thing, this yellow piece of paper, what in fact they gave you was not a ticket. It's actually called a summons. And what you'll notice is that there's no dollar amount uh, of the penalty and you don't have the option to plead guilty or not guilty like a regular traffic ticket. What it is is a summons that compels you legally to attend court on a specific day and a specific time. And, and this summons, it's very different from a traffic ticket. And it really goes to the nature of what you've been charged with. Driving with no insurance is one of the most serious charges that you can be charged with. And as I explained in a previous video, when you're driving with no insurance, the law looks at you like you're driving the, this 4,000 pound weapon. And it's a weapon on wheels and that can have very serious consequences. And that translates into this huge minimum $5,000 fine plus 25% a surcharge, so you're effectively facing a fine of minimum $6,250. And if you're a repeat offender, it gets worse. Uh, the fines can go up to, with surcharge, $62,500. You could face a three-month impoundment of your car and even up to a one-year license suspension. So very, very significant penalties. Now, because these penalties are so severe and really will have a dramatic impact on your life, the charges against you have to be litigated through a defined legal process. That's the way the law works in Canada. And the court of that process is giving you the ability to mount a legal defense. And the only way to fight your charges is really to know what are you fighting against? So our legal system has something called due process where you have a legal right to all the evidence that the prosecution has against you. So you can know what you're fighting against and you can mount a legal defense. The only way to get that evidence to you is to force you, to compel you to go to court. And that's where the prosecutor will give you a package called disclosure, which really should have all the evidence have against you so you can effectively put together a strategy to fight back against your no insurance charge. Okay, so I hear every day um, uh, from clients, I didn't know my insurance was no longer valid or uh, I have a good reason why the car wasn't insured. Does any of this mean that the charge will go away? I mean, can't I present an argument like that to the prosecutor? Well, the short answer is no. Generally, not knowing that your insurance has expired, not having notification of that, it's not a legal defense to the charge that you're facing. And the reason why has to do with the fact that driving is a legal privilege. It's not a legal right. And there's a big difference between a legal right versus a privilege. Our kids, for example, have a legal right to an, educa to an education, to learn. But we don't have a legal right to drive, and we certainly don't have a legal right to drive without insurance. That's a privilege. And when something is a privilege, you need to be proactive about the status of your privilege, including the uh, fact that you're insured or not insured. Okay. And you've mentioned a few times that this uh, charge has an automatic $5,000 fine plus uh, victim surcharge uh, uh, fees on top of that. I've heard that you can walk away with a much smaller fine. Is that true? If you're found guilty of this charge or you enter in a guilty plea to drive with no insurance, the law is very clear. There's no ambiguity. There is a minimum $5,000 fine. And there's also what they call a 25% victim surcharge. So the minimum fine to you is $6,250 for a first offense. And I've mentioned this previously, if you have previous convictions on this charge, the fines really can go all the way up to $50,000 plus 25%, so $62,500, so massive fines. But there's an exception where the justice of the peace has the power to lower the fines based upon your specific circumstances with a huge emphasis on your financial situation. However, John, the key to understand is that the prosecutor does not hold this power to reduce your fine. So you can have a compelling story about your circumstances, but the prosecutor cannot reduce the fine. The prosecutor can listen to you, they can have compassion, and they can feel bad for you, but they have a legal obligation to go for the minimum fine, which starts at this $5,000. And again, it doesn't matter how compelling it is, the prosecutor, they're just, their hands are tied at this point. To get the reduction, needs to happen in two steps. First, you need to either be found guilty of the charge or you enter in 
a guilty plea for that charge. Once that part of your case is over, your case actually moves into something called the penalty phase. It's only then during this penalty phase where it's a justice of the peace who will decide whether to reduce your fine and if so, how much to reduce it by. And it's only at that time in this penalty phase where you have a really short period of time. I mean, you're standing in a courtroom with people. You're actually sitting, standing before a justice of the peace. It's then where you got to pitch your story, where you then got to tell your story, what happened to you, why the justice of the peace should be justified and should be compelled, in fact, to lower your penalty. And that takes probably just about a few minutes. And it's in that few minute period of time where you make your story to the justice of the peace. And it's only he or she, that justice of the peace, who can decide whether they can legally reduce the fines or not.